Today, I'd like to talk about this fascinating subject of how you can draw a conic just given five points in the plane. So, I already discussed this a little bit in a previous video, but now I want to show you a very simple way to do it. And the reasons why I think this is such an interesting topic are multifold. One is that you can create extremely beautiful pictures using this idea because now rather than the conic being this rather abstract concept of an infinite number of points which are all curved around and hyperbola going off to infinity and such, we can just think of a conic as five points. So if we have five points and we move those five points around dynamically, that's like a kind of morphing conic. And by taking a kind of trace of one of these morphing conics, like a long time exposure camera picture, we can create these beautiful pictures. But all we're really doing is moving five points around in the plane. Like here, we have two points rotating and three points in a triangle. That's five points all together. It's a dynamic conic or a sort of trace exposure picture of a morphing conic. Well, anyway, so let's get into it then. How exactly do you construct a conic given five points? Well, you have to have one restriction, and that is that no three points are allowed to lie in the same straight line. This stops you degenerate cases. In almost all scenarios, this will be true. So given that, I'll explain to you how you can actually find the conic which goes through your five given points. Okay, so to start with, you, link, you can draw some lines in your diagram like this. This is just my preferred way of doing it. So I have an upper set of two points and a lower set of three points. And um, each member of the set of two points, each of those two corners, I'll link them to the two points in the other set near the other corner. You see the picture anyway. So after we do this, we can begin to do some more constructing. So basically, what we're going to do is exploit Pascal's theorem. And we're going to start just by drawing a kind of variable line. So the reason I'm using a circle here is so I can make it variable. I can move around that point around the circle to change the way the line is. So it swivels around this point. Now, I'm going to move this line later to find lots of points of the conic, but to start with, let's just find one. So to do it, let's find where this green line intersects with this first line here. We'll colour that point purple. And we can also colour this point purple. Um, so this is purple for Pascal because this is Pascal's line, in fact. If we connect these two purple points. Now, what we're going to do is something to sort of symmetrize the thing by doing something similar on the left. So, we ought to have a third Pappus point, uh, which would be a line coming out of here, should be passing through somewhere around here. We'll make our third do I say Pappus? I meant Pascal's point. So we find our third point of Pascal's line here. And there should be a line from here which passes through that. So we draw it on in yellow. And we find where these two green and yellow lines meet. And that will be a point on our conic. So now the construction is pretty much finished. All we have to do is vary the green line's position and find out how this point varies and it will sweep out a conic. So we can do that using this trace function here. Trace is on, okay, good. So now if we just 
move around this swivel around here, we find that the trace of this blue point is actually giving us a conic. So the nice thing about this configuration is that if we move our five points around, we can just set it off again. So in this case, we get an ellipse. Um, since the interior of the convex hull of the five points contains none of the five points, if that means anything to you. But anyway, nevertheless, our five points make an ellipse this time. That's the conic they make here. And we can think about the space of all conics that can be made from five points. In fact, to be honest, in GeoGebra, there's a function that you can use to do it much more easily. You can do it completely directly with this function here, conic through five points. So if we just see if we can mimic this shape here. It's roughly the same. And I think this is an absolutely fascinating way to learn, since all you have to do is vary these points and you can just see instantly how all these different conics will warp and change.